So palliative care is a subspecialty of medicine where we take care of patients with complex and severe illness, sometimes illness that's threatening their lives, really at any stage in the illness, throughout the course of the illness, to aggressively manage whatever symptoms are negatively affecting the patient. That can be pain or breathing or any other symptoms, and really doing whatever we can to make their quality of life as good as it can be for them. The other piece that's really an important part of what we do is working with patients through the complex medical decisions that come up um, in, in the setting of severe illness mm -hmm. to make sure that the medical care that we are giving them mm -hmm. is aligned with what they want from their medical care. Certainly end of life is a part of what we do, um, but it's only a very small part of what we do. Palliative care is really about taking care of patients and their families throughout the course of the illness, at any stage of the illness, even while they're getting life prolonging and even curative care. The goal being to really support their physical needs, their symptom needs, their psychosocial needs, and this complex medical decision making throughout the course of the illness. We have many patients in our clinic actually who are cured of their primary malignancy, but they still have a lot of quality of life impairments that they will have for the rest of their life. So it really isn't about dying. Certainly we do that too, mm -hmm. but it isn't about dying. It's really about helping people live as well as they can for whatever time they have. We do look at obviously the patient as the center point of care, but really the patient and family as the people for whom we are caring, right? Because any person who's sick needs a caregiver and everybody in the family is distressed and watching their loved one in pain and their loved one is needing more care and everybody's life is affected, right? Um, everyone is probably limited in how much they can go to work, all of those things. So we really do look at how the patient is going to be successful in having the best quality of life possible and, how, and what that will mean for their family too. But yes, to achieve that, we need a team of people. So the team is, a, a, we have physicians on the team, nurse practitioners, nurses. Uh, we, don't, we don't personally have physician assistants, but many people do. Chaplains are an essential part of the team. Even for patients who don't necessarily identify with a particular religion, everybody, you don't have to have a religion to have spiritual distress and need spiritual support. Mm -hmm. The chaplains are amazing. And social work is a huge part because you can imagine people with severe illness are going through different settings and different needs and the social workers are a tremendous part of making sure they get the care that they need, again, the care that is most aligned with what they want for their care and what quality of life means to them. We always favor getting involved earlier in the disease process. Really, as soon as someone is having symptoms or really facing a lot of complex decisions around their medical illness, when they're facing a lot of issues around what should happen, what interventions make sense, what, what will this intervention mean for my life, right, for how I'm going to live. So really upstream in an illness, um, especially in an illness that we know is going to be progressive over time, really important to get involved sooner rather than later. Then the family has a touch point for education around the illness and absolutely for symptom management so that we're able to um, address those things early. There are um, certainly studies have demonstrated a benefit um, and I'll come to that in one second, but one thing we even talk about a lot because we do work very closely with our interventional pain colleagues is there are some patients with cancer who maybe they don't have a lot of pain early on with certain cancers, but, but you know they're going to just because of the nature of that cancer. And often by the time we see them, we think, oh gosh, if someone had seen them and they would have gotten an intrathecal pump three months ago, this would have been great for them. A pump, that being a way of administering the medicine inside of their body. And by the time we see them, it's too late for that. So there are all kinds of things that we feel like it increases our options for how we care for them and their potential for having good symptom management and quality of life if we get involved earlier. Mm -hmm. But there have been studies that have demonstrated that too, where they looked at early palliative care versus standard care mm -hmm. for patients with end-stage lung cancer, which is a disease that has a lot of um, symptoms associated with it. And with the early palliative care group, they got concurrent, so palliative care along with their life prolonging care. And in the regular group, they got it um, if the oncologist wanted them to have it, just like otherwise. And they found improved symptom management, improved quality of life, um, less depression without more medication, 
in the early palliative care group, but the bigger finding, well, it wasn't bigger, but the surprise finding was really that the patients in the early palliative care group lived longer. They lived 2.7 months longer, which was statistically significant. It was an unexpected finding, a secondary finding. We don't know exactly what that means, but I think what people worry about when they get us involved is that that somehow means they'll die sooner. And that isn't what we see. We see people's symptoms get better controlled. We now have some evidence that it's not true, but when people's symptoms are better controlled, they can function better, they can do more, their body isn't as stressed. We have every reason to believe that that's a good thing for helping them live not only better, but maybe even a little bit longer.